this uh, descended into a monstrous party where Siobhan kept, you know, throwing more alcohol on everyone, right? And what happened was she definitely mo uh, moved the king of Meridies, the king of Trimeris, and the king of Monstiora into the same little drunken circle. And while they were rollicking and having a wonderful time, they came up with the brilliant idea that we should have a war. And Chiffon says, I'll autocratic, right? I know just the place. You know, it's just by my barony. It'll be great. So she basically took care of all the uh, practical aspects of it. And lo and behold, we had a war. And in a way, she did give, you know, Onstiora Trimarius. You know, it was our, you know, that was her dowry, and she finally got it, you know. So it, the war was all over a, a woman's diary, which is also historically accurate, you know. But, um... Whose cow? <laughs> whose cow? <laughs> yes, whose cow? <laughs> yeah. Well, Anstior has always had a problem that we get all so excited and we play persona. So about the third time someone has a war with us, we all get yelled, kill, 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 and everybody freaks out and doesn't want to be with us. We're having fun yelling, kill, 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 you know. So Edmund Moore became king again, and he wanted definitely to make sure we got to the fourth war. <laughs> So at the Third War, he has gobs of archers, absolute gobs. He has very little fighters. And of course, it didn't help too much that his archers shot the uh, Sir Lawrence in the head with an arrow. But we're up there on the hill, and here comes the Trimerian herald. He gets he is dressed impeccably. He has a high personal cloak on. He has that haughty Renaissance look when he has this hat. And he take, gets over and he bows with his hat. And he says the speech from Henry V. We will, you know, you, you few people who are here, you know, if you will surrender, you know, we will give appropriate r ransoms for it, you know, and we won't kill your bowmen, you know, down to the end. And we all, and he's talking about knights, and he's talking about knights, and my husband, who's a master of arms, raises his hand, uh, says to him, and what about the masters of arms? And the herald looks at him and he says, well, our kingdom does not have Master of Arms, so I forgot you. <sighs> okay. Harold should never be honest. <laughs> so we so we wait a little while before the battle is thing, and now the Herald comes back up with a a haughty look and he bows and he informs us that since we did not surrender, no quarter will be given and our archers will all be killed. And, the, you know, along with all our knights. And Jonathan then raised his hand and he said, <laughs> What about the masters of arms? <laughs> and this gentleman says, Well, we don't have them, so they don't count. Now, Jonathan's pretty irritated about this, right? So, when... And, Everybody knows he's irritated about it. So Sir Arthur and the fighters from LC gather around him, and when they yell, lay on, they make a corridor down the middle of the wall of the thing. And so right to the king of Trimeris, right? And Jonathan runs down the corridor, gets to the king of Trimeris, one shots him in the head and said, now are you going to remember Masters of Arms? <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> now
Now, I didn't do this story justice because I should have remembered the, the speech, right? but I didn't. But this story became very important to me because at Keen and Alicia's coronation, where King came in on a beautiful horse and the knights approached him and the horse ran. <laughs> then they tried to get, then Her Majesty was going to come in on the same horse. They brought the horse around. And she was dressed in a beautiful outfit with a bun roll. And the horse, she got on the horse and the horse, they started to lead the horse to where, enter the court. And the horse reared up, right, threw her majesty, her to be majesty down to the ground and sat on her. <laughs> and Bad the, horse. What? Bad horse. <laughs> Bad horse. And the only thing that really caused, uh, saved her from any major injury was the bun roll. No. We are, you know, waiting for the princess to come forth, right? And everybody's going, the horse sat on her. Is she okay? And <laughs> she's going to come here, you know. Oh, panic was erupting in the everything. So the laurels decided it was time for some entertainment. So their favorite entertainer is the prima donna. And when they said, will you entertain? He said, oh, it's not the right time. <laughs> and they went through four what they considered to be great entertainers, you know, most of them singers, because they carry better. And finally, I raised my hand and said, I'll, I'll do a story. <laughs> and so, but this was the only time, it was a perfect time for storytellers. You had 500 people and most of them were absolutely silent. And it was a natural amphitheater that meant that your voice was picked up and carried everywhere. So I told the story about my husband and the king of Tremeris. And the crowd leaped up and laughed and clapped and I saved the day. Because then the princess came in, you know, on another horse <laughs> and was crowned queen and then promptly taken to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> but from then on, see, before I was a laurel, but they said I was a research laurel that used bardic arts to teach. And at that point, they decided I was a performing laurel, <laughs> which meant that I didn't know anything about static arts and they could make fun of me. But it was nice to be recognized, but it was a one time in a million. I'm trying to think of something uh, they had that was more entertaining. Um, I think one of my favorite stories about a King of Onstiora is the one about William the Bear, which who is here today, you can meet him, right? Now William the Bear takes after his total animal. He's a big bear. And sometimes, you know, you don't really expect him to do anything really finesse. Right, but they were at Pensick and they were having trouble with the two chucks. Uh, and so William the Bear in the membership said, "Why don't we let the elder members of the two chuck handle their junior members? I'm sure they have some technique to do it." And so, for the first time in Pensick history, they allowed the the two chucks to govern themselves. Which turned out great, because yes, they will listen to their elders, you know, kind of thing. And he went into the two Chuck town to talk to them about the decision that was made. And he's sitting with the, with the chief. And he had been given this beautiful carved horn, you know. And he's drinking from it, and the chief of the two Chucks look over and says, I like that horn. Why don't you give it to me? And because of William's historical background, he did, right? So now the two chucks have his horn. And they look, he looks over and he said, I like that hat. 
you should give it to me. And so William took off the hat and gave it to him. And he puts the crown of Monstiora on his head and he says, I'm king because I have the crown. And William looks over and he says, no, you have the hat of the crown of Onstiora. It's the man that makes the crown, not the crown that makes the king. Uh, and the two chucks, well, they gave it back his horn. And the two chucks agreed to fight with Onstiora. And for the first time in the history of the two chucks, they kept their word and they fought with us the whole pensing.